All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today is Thursday, July 2nd, Thursday of the 13th week of Ordinary Time. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the souls of Eleanor, Dale, and family. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel. The country cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says. Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say, prophesy not against Israel, preach not against the house of Isaac. Now thus says the Lord, your wife shall be made a harlot in the city, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by measuring line, and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled far from its land. The word of the Lord. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, all of them are just.
Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there were people brought to him, and there the people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil evil thoughts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? But that you, you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So all week we've uh, heard from the prophet Amos. Um, So I think a brief history is in order to help us understand what's going on in these Old Testament readings. Now, don't go and pull your masks up over your eyes and take a nap. History can be interesting, and it's necessary so that we do not repeat it. The splitting up of the kingdom started at the death of Solomon in 930 B.C. It was Solomon, who you may recall, had many wives and concubines, and some of them worshipped pagan gods. This is where the trouble began. Judah, the southern kingdom, started out good, and Israel, the northern kingdom, did not as it practiced idolatry. Judah's kings were all one dynasty, and some were good, some were bad. Israel's kings were all bad, and there were many dynasties. The legacy of Israel's idol worship played out even to the time of Jesus, as you would know them in the New Testament as the Sumerians. Jeroboam, we read of today, the Jeroboam we read of today is Jeroboam II. He was the king from 793 to 753. He was very powerful and took a lot of the lands of the neighboring kingdoms. He also made war with the southern kingdom of Judah. However, while he did not bring in strange religions, he did not get rid of the ones that were already there. The Bible refers to these as high places. That's where people would go to worship the pagan gods. And this shows up in the previous two verses to what we read today. The Lord God asked me, what do you see, Amos? And I answered, a plummet. Then the Lord said, See, I am laying a plummet in the midst of my people Israel. I will forgive them no longer. The high places of Isaac shall be laid waste, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be made desolate, and I will attack the house of Jeroboam with the sword. The plummet, I didn't know what it was, so I had to look it up. It was used to see how far out of line a wall or a building was and to determine whether it should be repaired or torn down. Similarly, the kingdom of Israel was unsalvageable and needed to be torn down. However, this uh, prophecy by Amos didn't quite come true the way he said it. Jeroboam's son was slain as the king, but Jeroboam himself died of natural causes. God sent prophets to both Judah and Israel, not necessarily to predict exactly what was going to happen, but so they would change their ways. 
And if you know the history of the kings, you know they did not learn from their history. Israel did not last and was taken into captivity 30 years after Amos' prophecy. And they were taken into captivity by the Assyrians. Judah lasted a while longer, but because some of, because, only because some of their kings were reformers and threw out the pagan gods. But because not all were, they returned to their evil ways and were eventually taken captive into Babylon. These cycles of forsaking God and his law, worshiping pagan gods, taking up their vile practices, killing the prophets who warned them, losing wars and being destroyed or taken captive, and repenting and finding favor with God and prospering, and then, of course, repeating over and over again, continued even to the time of Jesus. As a matter of fact, our Lord refers to a particular prophet in Amos, or from this time, who was killed by the people of Judah. We read it in the book of Matthew. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourself that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of the innocent Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I say to you, all this will come upon this generation. That did indeed happen in 70 AD when the Romans came in and destroyed the temple. They never learned. Will we learn? When God applies the plummet to our country, what will we see? Will we shed the blood of the prophets? Remember what Cardinal Francis George said. I expect to die in my bed. My successor will die in prison and his successor will die a martyr in the public square. This is how it always played out in the Old Testament, and why should we think it would be different for us? That is what the scribes and Pharisees thought. I don't need to recite all of the, our country's vile practices. We see them all around us. When the plummet indicates our country is unsalvageable, there will only be one place to go. Many Protestant denominations fly the multicolored flag signaling their submission to the sexual revolution. The Catholic Church remains the rock concerning morality, although some clergy and parishes have capitulated to the culture. There will be a coming deception, a very powerful deception that even some in the church will fall to. But at some point, ours will be the only institution upholding the truth. It will be important to remain on the rock and focus on our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, 
It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood of Jesus Christ not be me to judgment and condemnation. Through your loving mercy, be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Thomas the Apostle, here at a regular time, 7.30, 
Uh, and then 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, we'll have a holy hour uh, for our nation, the Eucharistic Adoration and Devotional Prayer from 7 to 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, asking God's blessings upon the United States. Uh, and then Saturday morning, July 4th, our schedule slightly modified, confessions from 8 to 8.45 a.m., and Mass at 9 a.m. that day. So please join us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Praise be Jesus Christ.